I just enjoy it. Just be blessed in the presence of God. As we listen to that song, the song is about the breath in our lungs. It talks about Aloha. Aloha, the God that so loved the world, that He comes to join the face to be one with. And it's the ha, the breath of life, that it really was. It's that gift that He's given us today as we come to worship. So, Father, we just thank you. We thank you for this gift, the gift of life, the heart that you have given us. So, people here are not hungry, but people here in the empty sea, you so love us. Thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. Apart from him, we do nothing. Jesus, we love you, we enjoy you, we, we honor you, Jesus. Apart from you, we can do nothing, but what you all. Things are possible. You are the way, the truth, and the life. We thank you for the Holy Spirit, the power that we have to be able to do all great things and greater things, greater things, greater things that is yet to be done for thousands and generations in our family. The higher presence in our life. So we thank you, Lord. We say, Como Mai, come, bless our time here together. We thank you for Ed and Ruth out of all the places in the world. We have summoned them to this great personality. Touch them and bless them. We thank you for all that we have, Lord God. And we, we give you our bodies as a, as a living and holy sacrifice. And our tithes and offerings belong to you, Lord God. We worship you with everything that we have, Lord. So we just pray this morning for open hands. We pray for spiritual downloads, spiritual Snapchat from heaven that we use and be able to speak like to challenge us to be the Ecclesia, Lord God. And upon this rock, you will build it. And the gates of hell cannot, shall not, will not prevail because of your breath in our lives. So we just see ears to hear and hearts to obey you. We say, speak to us this morning, Father. Abba, Father. Speak to us as your children, as your strengthen us, encourage us, challenge us. Not to be comfortable and complacent, but to overcome, to be overcomers as we receive your word this morning. We pray all these things in Jesus' name and God's people said. Amen. Amen. Hey, man, can you see me just for a moment? I'll show you a couple of things before we bring up Ed and Ruth. Let's celebrate what God is doing. A um, couple of things. We've got the slide up again. Thanks for joining us. Uh, last week, Mari shared her heavenly identity statement with you. That don't rejoice because the demons obey you. Rejoice because the names is written in the heavenly realms. I will fight the good fight of faith for my heavenly identity statement. Talk about her, so let me share with you that I shared with our Transform Hawaii team last week Friday. This is Carl's heavenly identity statement. It says, I am a daughter of the Most High God. I am the ray of the sun wherever I go. I am his sweet and gentle spirit and bring much needed freshness to those around me. I have the passion fierceness and focus to accomplish what the Lord has asked me to do. Like a white whale or owl, I own the night. I hunt that night. I am not afraid of darkness. I soar above the circumstances. I have a very sharp discernment, able to pick up subtle nuances um, over people and situations. I am like Noah and Mary, the mother of Jesus, because of my obedience, generations will be saved in Hawaii. Hawaii will be enlightened as my children will be the brightness of the day. I am called to mother the next generation of Hawaii. Thank you because of uh, Father Anthony also 
setting the stage for that meeting. We went to the Big Island with some powerful young lions and leaders. This is a picture of them. Was anointed the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the Pastor of God, not for us. Just got a couple of days later. Who would have known that God would really use all of you to encourage, to build up, to strengthen the ecclesia from Kauai to Kau, from Hawaii to Hilo, right? And just yesterday, a part of the Hawaii State Commission on Fatherhood, I flew up to the island of Maui with the other commissioners, stood by the mayor of Maui to proclaim that uh, the month of June is for fathers here in the island of Hawaii. Uh, uh, Maui was a wonderful part for me. I was up there, over 20-something of nonprofit organizations, strengthening families in tears. Thank you for flying out for Honolulu, our men need strengthening. Thank you so much for investing in the economy of Maui. They were so blessed, and God is using all of you. What good thing can come out of Maui?
courtship for seven years. We got married at 23. And she is the love of my life, my personal intercessor. Every night before we go to bed, I reach for her hand. I put it on my heart. She prays for me. Every morning before I wake up, reach for that hand. And she prays for me again. And that's important then because the most vulnerable thing in the day is his heart. Because we are taught, and don't cry, be early, come on, don't be a sissy, you know? But when our wives pray for us, they talk to God about us. And you cannot interrupt them, <laughs> because they are talking to God. And so I would ask Ruth to pray a prayer of impartation, which is double blessing. One, is that you and your family shall be safe. The Bible says, believe in the Lord Jesus and you and your family shall be safe. I want you to think of everybody in your family who is not safe or who is not walking with the Lord. I said, I'm claiming that promise today. If you say, but hey, I don't have the anointing. Don't worry. Ruth has it. <laughs> she will pray. But the other thing we want to pray, and super pray, is for greater intimacy in marriage. We know that the ecclesia begins in the home, the driver of the home is marriage, but the engine for that machine is love, is romance. You know, and God wants to revive your romance, folks. You know, when we were dating, we wrote close to 7,000 letters because there were no phones and she taught in the mountains and had a very elite school in a regarding hospital. And every day we wrote a letter, almost every day. And I bet that the postman will be a guy with crooked teeth and bad breath, you know, because every morning, like a puppy dog, she was waiting for the postman. If the guy looked like our son, you know, he could have lost him. But what our kids did for Christmas, Jesse actually, they took the almost 3,000 letters and organized them by date and gave them to us in seven volumes. It looks like the Encyclopedia Britannica. <laughs> and so every day we read five to ten, and then we have never kissed this much since our honeymoon. It's so good to remember how passionate we were. And if you want that anointing, you're dead today, okay? Do you want it? Come on. Let me talk to your I said, come on, honey, if you have it, if you do. So we're going to pray a prayer of impartation for families to be blessed, and Ruth will lead us in prayer. Yeah, the Ecclesia starts in their homes, so we're going to pray for families right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you and we pray, Lord, for homes, for the family, for every couple, Lord, that is been under attack. We break the strongholds of the enemy over every couple, and the, that they will have more intimacy in their marriage, Lord. We impart blessings, Lord, on them. We impart on their children and grandchildren, Lord. And every member of the family that are not walking with the Lord, Lord, right now, we pray that they will today they will come to you. We believe, Lord. We believe for the families, for the home, for the couples, for the children, and for the grandchildren, Lord. Bring them closer to you. Fill them with your Holy Spirit and we rebuke the enemy in any form that is trying to attack every home. And we put committed under your care, Lord. We impart blessings and more blessings, Lord, even today, that your blessing be upon them, each one represented here, Lord, and we thank you for your presence. Holy Spirit, come. Come right now. I feel us all with your power. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Say, I receive it. I receive it. Amen. Now, be seated. And um, let's see. God, uh, do I have to forward to these to God? Okay, they come. Okay. Okay. Good. Running for the screen. Okay. Folks, no, that's fine. The Lord gave me a word. 
a complication. Kobe has got a complete reset of government, business, education, economy, everything. But also the way we do church. I mean, we love coming together, worshiping together, fellowshipping, right? And we pray that eventually we can go back to that. But doing that once a week is not enough. Like we should do it every day of the week. And that's what the ecclesia comes in. And all over the internet, there is more worship than ever, more Bible teaching than ever, church is happening every day of the week. And that is having an effect on people who never before were so aware of their mortality. Now people have no doubt they can die any time now. And the, and the shadow of eternity hangs on everybody. So they are right to be evangelized, right to be led to Christ. And that's what the Ecclesia comes. But I was praying all day yesterday, I mean not the whole day, but on and off during the day, and then I have good to pray because I sense that God has a word for you as a church and for Nana Kuhi. And, uh, and then this morning we were picked up by Eva and Dwight. And that was like eating a full plate of mango and guava and pineapple sweetness all over the place. Oh my goodness. These folks, and they are here from Nanakoli, you know? And then the Lord reminded me that people in Jerusalem despise God. Remember, they said, can anything good come out? That's not like Nanakoli, but can anything good come out? And the Lord says, Nanakoli is to Hawaii and to the world. But Galilee was to the world. Out of Nanakuri will come the light that will transform Hawaii. And then as we were talking, Brother Dwight was explaining to me the rainbow that is being built, you know, and connected this region with the stadium where we did the repentance and all that, and then Waikiki. Folks, get ready. Get ready because something extraordinary is about to happen. You know, extraordinary. Yes. Something extraordinary is about to happen. And God will use you as an apostolic church. What do I mean by an apostolic church? Churches are pastoral. I mean, they take care of people. They impact people. They baptize people, right? They counsel people. And praise God for that, right? None of us would be here if we were not for a pastor in a church. The problem is that that's all we get. And even if you have a mega church with thousands of people, that mega church is not changing the city. And you can drive one mile around that mega church. I see this mainland, and there's poverty, there's prostitution, there's all for good. So how can you have God all over inside four walls and nothing outside? But it's because the church is pastoral, which it should be, but it's not apostolic. What do I mean by apostolic? That whatever you have here, you take it to the world. And folks, I declare over you, whether you believe it or not, it doesn't matter. God is God and He has an attitude. Right. Nobody in the Bible made an appointment to be owned by God. He jumped them, he tripped them, he cornered them, he, he wrestled them, and he said, You are mine. He said that he took them captive and he gave them as gifts. And folks, God has taken you captive. And God will use you. And Nana Kuri will be known as a place where people will come to get married, 
to baptize their children, to dedicate their businesses, because in Nana Kroli is the presence and the power of God. I declare that word and that it is now. Some of you that came to our conference remember Poncho Rudia, right? And Ciudad Juarez, the northern capital of the world. And we used to fear and tremble. We told to be alive next year. Because 8,000 people were murdered. You could smell murder, you know. But Pocho, last Sunday, his political party, and you don't know this in seminary, because they teach about bringing heaven to hell, they teach about taking people to heaven, won the elections, and Pocho is being appointed Secretary of State for the state of Chihuahua, and he's given $1 billion to rebuild Ciudad Juarez. And I remember in 2000, I gave a similar word, and I say, people will go to Juarez because Juarez is where the grace of God is. So folks, people will come to Nana Kuli. <clears throat> the sweetness that you have. I mean, I tasted it again today. I knew that Alan and Mary are very sweet. To hang around them, oh my goodness, he's so sweet. But today, when we met White and Eva, I said, wow. <laughs> and then we were greeted by the greeters, and then by the lady taking the temperature. I mean, it was like an aloha talent, you know? By the time I got here, the power was story. Because you got it. You got it. And that's what I'm here to share with you. I will like, I'm an apostle by the grace of God. An apostle, bring your guys apostles and release them. And when you get released, you become a prisoner of Christ. You see, in biblical times and even later, somebody will conquer a territory. And to make sure that the people living there knew that they were conquered, they will be monuments to themselves, statues, so that people will see a statue of Caesar and they will say, oh yeah, we are conquered by the Romans. But the Lord did not build the statues. He sent people that looked like him. So that people in Nanakuri and eventually in Waikiki and eventually in all the islands of Hawaii will know that these islands belong to God. Because they will look at you and you will reflect Jesus. You will take the presence of God. But to understand that, we must understand the anointing. And that's what I want to share with you today. I want you to read out loud this and put some task of sauce in your voice because you have enough for me. Okay? You need the outside the bathroom. At the count of three, I want you to read it loud and clear. One, two, three. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. You do not walk on the light of the shadow of death. I will be known. Passage. I said. 
said, yes, the Lord is my shepherd. Yes, I have a promise that I will never want. But there are days when I don't feel that I am dwelling in the house of the Lord. There are days when I don't feel that his loving kindness and mercy follow me. Why? And now we have a problem. We have a problem because the Bible says one thing, that's a promise, and I give a different one. What is it that I am missing? And what I am missing is that in this psalm there is a verse that says, He anoints my head with oil. He anoints my head with oil. When we, we can have a whole Bible memorized, but if we don't have the anointing, all you have is paper and ink in your head. You see, you need the Logos word, which is the written word, and you need the Rema word, which is the anointing. You know, if you want in Mexico, I will say, if you order a burrito, order some salsa picante with a burrito. Because a burrito without salsa picante is very choking. <laughs> so what we need <coughs> then is the anointing. Because the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want truly goodness and kindness will follow me all the days of my life. Do you want that? Yes. But what do you need for that to be true? You need the Lord to anoint your head with oil. Yeah. Now, when I was reading this psalm before I understood what I'm about to share, I have no problem picturing the Lord's my shepherd. I am a sheep. He takes me down, down by still waters, you know, and big pastures and all that. He anoints my head with oil. But what I need to know that now I know and I want to tell you is that shepherds in Israel anointed the head of their sheep. They did that and there is a reason for that. And when I know that, everything else in this song makes sense. And let me explain that. God's anointing is what turns I mean, ordinary people into extraordinary servants of him. Moses was, I mean, a fugitive baby, and he became a legislator when the anointing came. Samuel was a miracle baby, but when the anointing came, he became the great prophet. David was the youngest in a long family in a very small clan, but when the anointing came, he became the best king. Gideon was a coward. Remember, he was fighting wheat to go and hide. But when the anointing came, he became a hero. Joseph and Daniel were captives. But when the anointing came, they became prime ministers. Peter was a fisherman. And then he became the rock. Paul was a murderer. And he became the architect of the church. Imagine, God built a model in Adam made out of clay. And that clay was dead matter until the aloha, the breath of God, God breathed it into. And that dead matter became a living thing. And that's the anointing you will receive today. God will give you his own heart. God will breathe in you. The Holy Spirit is like red cells in your blood. What do red cells do? They carry oxygen to your lungs. And when they get there, they take the oxygen for carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide will make you weak and tired. Oxygen is what gives you life. Is your God will give you his aloha and you will turn from a dead mother to a living mother because God is God and he has an attitude about it. And your attitude determines your altitude. You better get that. I mean, you may say, I am the youngest in this family, but I am chosen by the Lord. But we have to understand that there are three uses for the anointing. Bible. Number one, for consecration. Number two, for healing. And number three, for sanctification. 
You see, the alone is the marker that God puts on you in the same way that this marker tells me and tells Ruth we belong to each other and tells anybody out there we are off limits, okay? We have been claimed by someone else. And this wedding ring is a marker. The anointing of God, when it comes on you, and it comes in the form of oil on you, is a marker. So look at the anointing for consecration. It was used to anoint kings, priests, and prophets, right? In 1 Peter 2 9, it says that we are kings and priests, okay? And the anointing validates and empowers us. So, <clears throat> David was not a king until he got anointed. Peter was not an apostle until he got anointed. You see, the aloha of God is what turns their matter into living thing. Then the other anointing is for healing. And in Psalm 23, the anointing is for healing, and I will explain that. If anyone among you is sick, then call the elders to pray, anointing him with oil in the name of our Lord. You see, that's the anointing for healing, <clears throat> and we have seen that. In Psalm 23, <clears throat> the anointing is for healing, and I want to prove it to you. Why anoint a sheep with oil in Israel? Why? Can you picture a shepherd, okay, like a pastor with a flask of oil, anointing every sheep? Because the worst enemy of the sheep is not the biggest one or the most distant. Is that the lion? Is that the, the, the bear? The worst enemy of the sheep is the nose fly. It's a fly that eventually targets the nose of the sheep. And why is it lethal? Because it is the most common, is the most numerous, and is the one that can get inside the sheep. How can a fly get inside the sheep? Very simple. The nose fly covers over the sheep's head and deposits an egg that rolls into the nose. And when the sheep breathe in, the nose that has humidity and temperature becomes an incubator. And that causes the egg to hatch. And a larva comes out, and that larva gets inside the sinus passages, and through the sinus passages, they get into the brain. That's why it's so lethal. That's why it's so bad. And once it gets inside there, okay, it causes recurrent headaches on the sheep. It causes occasional blindness and eventually dementia. Now picture this. A sheep is moving very gently. A nose fly flies over it, never touches it, drops an egg, the eggs lands, the head is dry, it's not anointed. That thing uses the nose as a toboggan, gets here, the sheep breathing is inside like a coronavirus, and there it hatches a larva, and that larva makes it very congested. Now it gets headaches, and it gets blindness, it gets dementia, and then in bad cases it perforates. The section that separates this from the brain is into the brain and gives the ship something that the ship never saw coming. Headaches cause the ship to become irrational. Let me explain for a moment that the devil, okay, Belzebub is the prince of what? Of flies, okay? Okay, no flies. The devil will deposit thoughts in your mind that they roll down and they incubate. And when they incubate, they hatch. And look what happened to the sheep. It becomes irrational. It begins to bang the head against the, the walls. It runs away from the flock. And it runs over the cliff. 
How many people that are saved, love the Lord, have a good marriage, have been grew up in a good family, begin to pursue the faith? I mean, they have a lovely wife, they did good for pornography. I mean, they have a next to them, it's free, it's legal, it's accessible, they did good for pornography. And now they begin to help them get against the rock. And they begin to run away from the flock. Oh, Christians, you know, they are all imperfect. And after a while, they fall off the cliff, just like a sheep. Now, why are bones the head of the sheep with oil? Because it prevents flies from landing. Number one. Number two, if the fly drop eggs, it immobilizes them. Because you have the oil, it cannot use it as a program. If the sheep already breathed in and it has a headache, it relieves pain. And if there is a larva, it makes a sneeze and it emits. That's what the shepherd does and this carefully. That's what the Lord is going to do right now. He's anointed your head with oil. The sheep doesn't say, excuse me, the shepherd doesn't say, excuse me, beloved sheep, do I have your permission to anoint you with oil? No. He grabs it, and whether you want it or not, she gets it. And a bit long, the Lord is anointed to her head with oil. Because he wants to prevent the flies from landing. He wants to immobilize the eggs if they land. He wants to relieve the pain. Yes, relieve the pain. And he wants to emit the larva there. The parents of success is proud. The best protection against those flies is for the sheep to stand in a circle close to each other, facing inward with their heads close to the ground and their tails acting like a fan. But you do the opposite. And you get hockey, and you think, well, I can handle it. It's another trick, I will not get drunk. I'll do it one last time, and I'll stop later. And you begin to shy away from people. That's when you lose the protection. That's why it's so important right now to realize, is the Lord your shepherd? Say yes or no. Yes? Is the Lord your shepherd? Raise, raise your hand. If the Lord is your shepherd, he's anointed your head with oil. Right now, he's anointed your head with oil. You may say, I don't believe it, it doesn't matter. I do, and the Bible says no. He's anointed because the future of Hawaii hangs on Nanakuli. Then anything good come out of Nanakuli, just wait. I mean, this will be the tingle mecca of Hawaii. People will come here. Football teams will train here because what they do, they will beat the game. Why? Why not? Because the Spirit of the Lord is here. But you have to be anointed. But you see, they said anointing to set people aside, consecration, and anointing for healing. But they said anointing for sanctification. Is to for chosen and power and back up by heaven. This is what the anointing does best. In Exodus 30, 22 to 33, I want you to read that later. I won't take the time because I only have so many minutes. It says there that this anointing is so special that anyone who uses it unlawfully will be punished with death. Now, nowadays, we don't do that. You cannot kill a pastor for his use in the anointing. But actually, the death is a spiritual. Ruth and I were watching a television evangelist, a man that has placed millions at one point, one eighth of the world population. Listen to him. Now we're watching, and he's still doing okay. But what he was, died. Because he did use the anointing. I am standing before you not because I am a mighty man. I am standing before you because the anointing makes me mighty. And we have to know where the power comes from. 
or else we will be like that haughty BC4 woodpecker that hit the tree at the very moment that lightning struck the tree, and as the woodpecker is flying away, he says, I didn't know I have all that power on my beat. <laughs> no, it's not in your beat. It's above your beat. You just happen to be in the right place at the right time. <laughs> and that's why he says, take the finest of your past. I want you to repeat that. Mirror, Mirror. cinnamon, frankenstein, keisha, and oil. oil. Each one of these components is key for one problem that will be caused by the nose fly. <clears throat> the mirror is to relieve pain. It takes away the pain. Jesus was offered in three times at birth, and the cross and at the tomb. When he was offered there, I mean, he couldn't choose as a baby, his parents got it from the other child. He couldn't do anything, you know, when they went to, to prepare his body, but he was resurrected by them. But when he had a choice, and he was given there, this with Benham, he'd be flying because he wanted to suffer the fullness of pain. So that mirror takes away pain. Cinnamon is to add flavor to, uh, to arrest the stench in the temple. It sweetens that which is bitter and it covers mass that which is foul. Why was that necessary? Because those sheep were normal sheep. They ate and they disposed of what they ate. And that didn't smell good. And when they cut them open, they bled and the blood coagulates it. And that made it feel good. So then the cinnamon was like a perfume that covered that. So remember, the mirror is for pain. The cinnamon is to cover the stage. The third one is fragrant pain. To increase the appetite is the digestive enzyme. Revival requires that we first empty ourselves of junk food. Okay, to digest God's word properly. So we need that. The fourth one is kasha. It lacks a thing. It purges you. But it grows very, very high in the mountains. So you must go up to get it. So that then it can cleanse you of anything that you get down in the wrong place. And the olive oil is the largest component. And it's the one used to integrate the other ones. It makes them stick together. And it's produced, this is perfect, by pressing, by crushing, by squeezing, and by boiling it. So these are the components, okay? Jesus was pressed and crushed at the garden to the point where his will no longer come. Not your will. Not my will, but your will. And it's so important that we receive the anointing to realize that that anointing, God gives it to you freely, but your character is the container for that anointing. God will give it to you unlimited quantities, but you determine if the container is clean. And in 1 Timothy 1.19, Paul says, that we must be careful to maintain our faith and our clean conscience. And some overlook not the faith, but the clean conscience, and they lost the faith. Because faith is a gift from God. That gives you faith really. But if your character has holes in it, if you allow things, that anointing will not stick. And so your anointing might let me go on. And there is a difference between flies and mosquitoes. When a mosquito lands, you know that it landed, and you know that it's biting you, and you do something about it. A fly, boom. And that's where the spiritual nose fly comes. They drop innocent looking thoughts. Maybe I married the wrong person. 
and they will recount you in Nalakuri with unjustice so that you become angry. And first you're going to speak on boastful words. I mean, why has Pastor Allen and Sister Mary found so much grace in the most unlikely circles in government, okay? This is not a government populated by some school teachers, okay? Why? Because it is in peace. They bless the people plus. And that's your inheritance. They are your leaders. They are the apostles. They are the ones laying down the foundation. It's so important because we live in an evil day. Evil day is when the principalities in power go off the government and the media, and they make legal that which is unrighteous. We are living that in California. Our laws are the most unrighteous laws you can ever imagine. I mean, here in Hawaii, you are in paradise compared to us. I mean, we are being shot down and through legislation that is so unrighteous. It's an evil day. But it's an evil day, not an evil day came. You will go away. Every time an evil day came was followed by a revival. And we are looking forward to that revival in California. But Hawaii is still another COVID is still to that. But we have to put the veil of truth. Okay? And the breastplate of righteousness. And the sun does of the gospel of peace. That's prayer evangelism. And the shield of faith to extinguish the flaming arrows of the evil one. When you're using arrows, it's because you are outside. And you hope that that arrow with fire will land where it can light the fire. And the only place where the devil can land the fire is if you are angry at someone. And then he says, the helmet of salvation, that's evangelism, the sword of the spirit. Fighting cars are effective only if they land on combustible material. And the only piece of combustible material in the book of Ephesians is anger, because it teaches that they were in jurisdiction. Folks, God has given Nana Puli a sweet. That's a deposit of a city that you can never let it be compromised. In the same fashion that God gave San Francisco a gift of mercy. I mean, it's a city named after San Francis of Assisi, the apostle of mercy. It's a city that was there to serve California, you know, with the 49ers and all that. But when a city has a gift, and the church is not present in the city, the devil will attract the people that need that gift the most. And who needs mercy the most? The people that are confused as to their sexuality, the people that are angry, the people that are prostitutes and homeless. So if you have a problem with rats, don't blame the rats, it's your garbage. Clean up your garbage and the rats will go someplace else. And that's why I want you to receive this, because as an apostle, I have seen the hand of the Lord point to a city. Why the city in that tower? I don't have a clue. God is God, and He has an attitude about it. And He has said, Nanakuri is mine, and Nanakuri will be transformed. Remember your first Pentecost. Remember when you were overpowered by the Holy Spirit. Remember, when you tasted the baptism in the Holy Spirit, just go back and remember that. I mean, this is what Ruth and I are experiencing with this love letter. I mean, we have a good marriage. All our kids are walking with the Lord. Our grandkids are on fire. People refer to us as example. But we realize there's so much more yet. We went back and we said, oh, look what I told you here. Look what I wrote there. I mean, in those days, there were no telephones, so we pick up the, 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 the brightest star in Lucero, we call it in Spanish, the, the, the normal star. And we would stand at the same time, she in the hills and in the pump, and look at the star, and I would send a message, and she would get them there. We say, look, we didn't have a phone. And now that we have a phone, we should be sending love letters to each other. Go back to your Pentecost. God wants to baptize.
baptize you today with the incredible death. I remember when I was on my prayer drive, Ruth and I have a prayer drive between two mountains and two lakes, and we go there every week. One day I was alone, and there's no telephone reception, praise God. And the Lord told me, Ed, remember November 14, 1958? Oh, yes, Lord. That was the day I became a Christian. What did you have? Nothing. What did I give you? Everything. Yes, Lord, I have nothing. You gave me everything. And then he took me. Remember the first time you preached how nervous you were? You had gone to the pulpit, you know, like fighting nine times of hoping that you could last one second. And I gave you victory. Yes, I remember. And remember the first time you led someone to the Lord, and he took me year after year, but I had nothing, and he gave me everything. And then he went quiet. The way wives go quiet, and they talk to you through their silence. What did I do, honey? You are not talking to me. And then I said, Lord, oh, what is it? And then the Lord said, Ed, but you have very little, you trust me for everything. And now that you have lost, you trust me for very little. I want you to put all the chips on the table, and I want you to roll the dice. I want you to believe me for more. Don't try to protect what you have, because I gave it to you. I protected it. I want you to put your money, your time, your talent, everything on the table, because we must be filled with the Spirit God. That means every day of our life, every day of our life. The candelabra in the temple were 24 hours a day, seven days a week. That's how the presence of God has to burn in your heart. The outcome of a race is determined by how you finish, not by how you start. When you start the race, you are rested, you are ready to go. It's how you finish, but pay attention. How you finish is determined by what you do between the start and the finish. And that is today. And you're going to go home and say, hey, that was a good, but a lousy message. No, no, God is speaking to you. I say to you as an apostle, as somebody in the room, you have the order of leading people, changing cities and culture. The hour has come for Hawaii. This Thursday, Pastor Allen and Carl and I are going to Kona on a mission to rebuild the world because that's where the revival came to Hawaii. That is where things will begin. Who is going there? Your apostle. A native Hawaiian with native Hawaiian blood to speak, to rebuild that. And that's why the temple has to be daily, so has to be your life and life. So, in conclusion, I'm going to ask you five questions, and I want you to answer these questions before God. Have you lost your ability to endure pain in ministry? Then you're short on mirror to cover that pain. God didn't call you to a Sunday for picnic. He called you to warfare. There is pain. But if you have enough fear, you can take the pain. No pain, no gain, right? Can you allow bitterness to set in? I mean, there are so many things that can turn bitterness on in you in ministry. People that you serve, you bless, you pull your life, and they walk out of you. But you need cinema. Can your spiritual walk turn into a routine that eliminates hunger and expectation? When nostalgia exceeds expectation, you are dying. But all you do, you remember how good it was before and how lousy it's going to be tomorrow. You are sick. That larva already got into your brain. You need fragrant pain. You need to develop hunger. I pray almost every day to be a novice at something new that God is about to do. He <clears throat> has remained an expert at everything that he already did. When I go over my PowerPoints, which I have used many times, I 
cry out to God and say, Lord, let these dry bones come alive. Give me a fresh word. I want it a low heart today. I don't want to talk about myself. I want to impart. But for that, I need the fragrant pain. That your mind or body being defiled and need a purge and accept it. Do you need to run to the bathroom? Do you need cash to provide the needed cleansing and purity to get away with pornography and fantasizing and dirty thoughts and bitterness and whatever it is? Whatever it is, cash will do it. And have you run out of oil? The oil, the oil in the world, the garden. The oil is the integrator of all the components for the anointing to flow from your innermost being. Are you thirsty? If anyone is thirsty, they can come to me and drink. And after his or her innermost being shall flow rivers of living water. This is like a contradiction. If you're thirsty, what are you lacking? Water. And what do you get if you come to him? You become rivers. Not what rivers of living water. That's what the Aloha does. That's what the Aloha does. Okay, Holy Spirit, fill us. Holy Spirit, baptize us. Okay? You shall receive power, but the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Because he's not that far from each one of you, because he is in him. You live in him, you move in him, you exist in him. And I close with this. Paul wrote in Acts, or oh, actually in Acts 17, 27, says, We live in him, we move in him, we exist in him. There is a difference between living and existing. Living is a biological function. The day you die, your life is gone. Existing is a legacy. It exceeds your biological life. And how do you get from living to existing? There's a bridge called we move in him. You breathe in the aloha. And you breathe out the aloha. You go home and you bless your home. You cook under the anointing as good teachers. You serve a meal that is filled with the Holy Spirit. You go to work and you say, I come here to minister. I say, listen to Brother Duan. I said, we have a minister in this railroad that is being built. You go there, brother, you bless him in rain, and you declare the glory of God is right here. What, what now? If you work at a restaurant, I mean, bless the food that you bring to the table. Chop the annoying onions in the name of the Lord. I mean, serve the drinks in the name of the Lord. Why, why not? In conclusion, your pastor has done, and many of you have done, but all of you should do the ABC experiment. All of you, because you will be ill prepared for what's coming. Unless you do it. So make it a priority, like a mission trip. You wash car, you, you clean houses, you raise money, but do it. Because if you don't do it, you will be in the grip for what is coming. That is taking you captive. And then turn your home into an ecclesy if you haven't done it already. Open the door of your home, invite the Lord. Ruth and I did that. I mean, we did that the day we came from our honeymoon, but we had do it again. And we are known to be doing the seven doors we have in our, in our first floor. And we say, the Lord is here. And now we have breakfast with Jesus, lunch with Jesus, dinner with Jesus, eat with Jesus. We go to bed with Jesus next to us. We wake up with Jesus in the morning. He's all over the place because we are the Ecclesia. Yeah. And you cannot entertain people because of COVID, but you got four repairmen come to our house. And all four, without us opening the subject, what is fear? Tell me. And we were able to usher them into the kingdom. Why? Because we are the ecclesia. Yeah. So, Father, I pray in the name.
name of the Lord Jesus, that everybody now, raise up your hands if you want the anointing. You have to cooperate. Raise up your hands and say, Lord, what you want it? Full measure, get both hands up, okay? Both hands up. You're about to get a kingdom, a people that go Get inside of you. It will change you from within. Father, in the name of Jesus, be in part apostolic anointing upon this congregation. This will be the Antioch of Hawaii. Father, fill them. Battle, 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 battle. In Jesus' name. And I'll say, are you seated? Now breathe it in. You have been possessed by the Lord. You will guide you. And what you do in the next hour will determine the rest of your life. You go home and you are not something in your home. Ruth and I have a fountain at the entrance of your home. And we took a bottle of oil and we put it on the fountain. And after the water is flowing, the oil is flowing. And every time we drive in, we say, yeah, that fountain is anointed, it's a renowned that we have got our own. We belong to Jesus. So in Jesus' name, go and give heaven to the devil. Amen. Ooh, would you stand if you're blessed with him? Would you stand? Yeah, put your hands together again. And God bless so also. Praise the Lord. Stay standing. Uh, a couple of things. What you do in the next hour and 24 hours is so important. Speak without words is dead. So one of the things I want to encourage you to do today, download the app, Transform My Lord app. If you did not do that, download the app. That's how we stay connected. Uh, the other thing is I want to encourage you to think about how many of you are blessed in here? Y'all will be standing up, right? This is not about a moment, it's about a movement. For all of us to transform the state. We got our representative SKC live.
It's our time that we pick our rightful place to shine the light, to partner with other great leaders all over the world. It's not just for this family. It's for the nations of the world. What a call came on the worship team uh, as we wrap up this morning. Keep on, you guys been blessed this morning. We should put your hands together. Thank you.